A CNN investigation is raising new safety concerns about Boeing 737 MAX jets. The fleet is grounded in the wake of two recent crashes in which 346 people died. CNN's Drew Griffin is live in Chicago with details. What have you learned, Drew? Allison, this goes back to the very design of the plane, questions relating to flight safety, how the design was improved. One government official telling me this all has very serious implications for Boeing. A CNN analysis of FAA data is raising questions about how Boeing could have designed a flight safety system on its 737 MAX, centered on just one sensor with a history of failures. The MCAS system is designed to prevent a plane from stalling. It's triggered by one of two AOA sensors which read the plane's angle in flight. But if that AOA sensor gives an incorrect reading, the MCAS could activate, automatically pitching the nose of the plane down repeatedly as the pilots struggle for control. Investigators in the crashes of the Lion Air and Ethiopian Airlines crashes suspect that scenario started a chain of events that led to both tragedies. Just why Boeing would have no backup for a single sensor with a terrible track record has aviation experts baffled. This is a fairly simple external device can get damaged on a regular basis. In fact, a CNN review of FAA records shows AOA sensors had problems on at least 216 flights since 2004, sometimes forcing pilots to make emergency landings or abort takeoffs. 42 of them happened on Boeing planes. And here's proof Boeing knew these sensors were prone to problems. Two separate FAA airworthiness directives involved Boeing planes in 2013 and 2016, before the 737 MAX crashes, ordered inspections or changes to AOA sensors because of an unsafe condition that could lead to problems with control of the airplane. Far too often, it takes a tragedy to connect the dots and say, you know, we really ought to take a hard look at the design of this piece of equipment. Boeing says its new software fix includes input from two AOA sensors being in agreement before the system would activate. Though Boeing CEO Dennis Molenberg says that is not an admission of an initial design flaw. We haven't seen a, you know, a technical slip or gap in terms of the fundamental design and certification. But CNN has learned Boeing never flight tested a scenario in which the AOA sensor malfunctioned. A former Boeing test pilot tells CNN, apparently we missed the ramifications of the failure of that AOA probe. Potential failure conditions were instead analyzed in the design and certification, according to another source familiar with the testing, and it was determined trained pilots would have been able to handle the failure. It should have been in the test program right up front to expose that problem. Aviation expert Peter Lemme, who was subpoenaed by a grand jury in an investigation into the 737 MAX, says he doesn't understand why it took two fatal crashes for Boeing to make changes. This is the part that I find almost uh, incredible because um, AOA vanes have been on the airplanes for many, many years. It's, it's a well-known failure. Boeing CEO says the 737 MAX was designed safely, but that the proper procedures were not completely followed by the pilots. When we design a system, understand that these airplanes are flown in the hands of pilots. And in some cases, our system safety analysis includes not only the engineering design, but also the actions that uh, pilots would take. But when pressed on why Boeing is admitting no flaws in its design, the CEO walked out of the press conference. 346 people died. Can you answer a few questions here about that? John, the FAA, the Department of Justice, Congress have all opened investigations looking into just how this plane was designed and how Boeing was able to get proper government clearance with what now appears to be a plane with a safety flaw. John? Yeah, these questions remain open and remain very Concerning. Drew Griffin, thank you so much for your reporting on this. Four Boeing employees called an FAA whistleblower hotline to report serious issues with Max Jets the day after the crash report was released. Joining us now is John Barnett. He's a former quality manager who worked at Boeing for nearly three decades before retiring and filing a whistleblower complaint. He worked on the Boeing 787 Dreamliner. Mr. Barnett, it is so good to have you here with us this morning. What do you think when you hear the CEO there say that maybe the problem is with the pilots? <clears throat> well, I it, it, it's, it concerns me um, based on what I've seen um, in Charleston and um, it concerns me that, that 
that they're trying to point it at the pilots. Mm -hmm. um, I, I've seen firsthand where uh, Boeing turns things around on the people that are bringing up the issues. Yeah, so I mean, I know that you've... That con it's concerning. Understood. So let's talk about what you saw. So you worked for three decades at the South Carolina plant of the Dreamliner. And just tell us some of the things that you saw with your own eyes that caused you concern. Okay, uh, real quick clarification. Um, I've been with Boeing for 32 years and I spent 25 years up in Washington State. Oh, okay, got um, it. I Good transferred, yeah, I, I transferred to Charleston in 2010 to help set up the plant here and get it rolling. Okay, so um, tell us the things that, that really worried you. Well, um, the, in a nutshell, just the, the lack of concern for following processes and procedures and, and following the build plan and making sure that the build records are accurate, yeah, that, that's where it started. And I'm sure you've seen, you know, the Times report um, were identified issues um, with the ENUP FOD on the electrical issues. You yeah, know, I do want to get uh, into that. Ignored. Let's, specifically, okay. let's talk about this. So you saw electrical, you saw metal shavings, am I right, floating around electronics equipment? Yes, um, the floor floorboards are installed with titanium fasteners and what was happening was the e-nuts that they were using which is actually made out of corrosion resistant steel um, was peeling the threads off the titanium fasteners as they were torqued and some of these are three inches long um, and what happens is they fall down and, and right up underneath where the, the the floorboards is where all your main wiring runs um, for your airplane that's where all your flight control wires run that's where all your systems wiring run so all these shavings and slivers are falling on top of the wiring, the electronic equipment, the little uh, control boxes that are mounted in there. And, it, and when we found it, we, f we found a layer on everything. So, you know, it's not just one or two pieces. It was, it was significant. Okay, a couple more questions. Did you also see, and I'm looking at the New York Times report, but I don't know if this is from you because there have been several whistleblowers. Did you see nuts? bolts and dirty rags left inside the plane where they shouldn't be? Yes, I have. Um, FOD is a big problem in Charleston. Um, it, and it, it, like I say, it goes back to the, I guess the culture that um, the people, I guess, really don't understand the significance or what the end result could be, right? So. So there, there doesn't seem to be as much focus on cleaning up FOD as you go. Did you find a, a ladder in the tailpiece of the plane that is not supposed to be there? No, I didn't see it myself, but I did hear about it, yes. So yes, all of these things caused you enough concern that you raised red flags. You didn't like seeing dirty rags inside the engine. You didn't like seeing metal shavings on top of the electronics equipment. And you went to the management. Oh, absolutely. He, here's what, here's what, I just want to read their statement, okay? So here's what management says. We can't comment on or verify the report. Here's what I can say. Safety and quality are absolutely at the core of Boeing's values. Speaking up is a cornerstone of that safety culture, and we look into all issues that are raised. Mr. Burnett, what was your experience when you told your managers what you'd seen? Well, basically, I was, uh, well, with the ENUT fought, I was removed from it, and uh, one of my peers was put in charge of it. Um, the defective parts, um, again, I was basically told to don't worry about it, let it go. Um, but and if I could, I would like to jump to you know I think this really needs to be a cultural discussion um, because one of the responses from Boeing was that they substantiated two out of my ten complaints. Mm -hmm. Well, I've only filed four, mm -hmm. right? So I, I filed for the ENUT fod, um, the defective parts. Yeah. Um, in two in 2016, I, I discovered that 25 percent of the oxygen uh, systems that provide emergency oxygen to passengers. Um, I discovered that we have a 25% failure rate with those. Oh my gosh. Um, That's really yeah, scary and stuff. Have a, uh, and, and, Mr. Rudder, and we have a serial number. 
I'm sorry. Go ahead. Well, only because we're running out of time. I want to get I want to cut to the chase because this sounds like really scary stuff to my ears as just a member of the a passenger. OK, so just the flying public. Would you knowing what you know and what you've seen with your own eyes, would you ever fly on the Boeing Dreamliner? Absolutely not. No, ma'am. Um, John Barnett, you are a whistleblower. We really appreciate you bringing what you've seen to the public's attention. Thank you very much for being here on New Day. Thank you for having me.